Hey guys, Red Gamer here again in our discussions in gaming section. This week, I wanted to talk a little bit about kind of a personal realm of gaming for me, which is PCs. Um, I definitely grew up with playing in different consoles, but I've always been partial to the PC game realm. Uh, having my own gaming rig, built my own gaming rig a couple years ago, and have definitely been partial to the PC games as opposed to the consoles. One of the things that's always been disappointing, especially when looking at the previous generations of games, was that there weren't a whole lot of games being made specifically for the PC. Which, of course, made it so that you mostly got ports and got different versions of games that were built for the console and then had their own set of issues on the PC. So looking back, I think there are certain games that really stand out as prominent and strong in the PC realm. And oddly enough, one I keep going back to was Deus Ex Human Revolution. If you've never played any of the Deus Ex games before, the general story is a transhumanism, kind of futuristic story, where people become half-bionic with augmentations and different sorts of mechanical pieces. The original game looked at kind of a very far future where you play as almost like a clone type. And the second game we don't talk about because that story was bizarre. But the remake, Deus Ex Human Revolution, is meant to be a prequel, looking at kind of the starting of augmentation. Now, Human Revolution was the first game really in a long time in that era to release just for the PC. It was designed with the PC in mind, and everything about it was there. For anyone that's ever played a PC game, especially in the older realms, you know the different pieces that really make a PC game strong. Probably most notably is an inventory system. Whenever playing on a console, because of course you don't have a mouse, there seems to be more of like a scroll wheel type style or a list style for an inventory, which gets extremely annoying and equally annoying on a PC when you're either constantly having to move your mouse or keys or even scroll the mouse wheel. So Human Revolution, of course, had a box-based inventory, which also gave you a spaced-based inventory. Beyond that, the game had a lot of great features that were just astounding, even for its time, and still hold up quite well today. And I just want to talk a little bit about them and kind of look at how they stand in the realm of PC gaming. In my opinion, Human Revolution, and very specifically the Director's Cut, is pretty much an example of what anybody should strive for making a PC game today. It also showcases why PC games can do so much. The game's storyline was awesome, the story writing was dynamic, the uh, different feelings, different pieces of it were great, but what made Human Revolution so astounding it was kind of the pinnacle of Deus Ex, the choice system. Every sort of mission objective had different ways you could approach it, and this was extremely revolutionary back when the first game released, you know, pre-2000. The idea was extremely neat where you got to pick which way you wanted to go. Now, most people think of choices as, you know, stealth or going full-out shooting. Deus Ex presented multiple ways even to approach it that way. To give an example, let's look at the very first mission from Human Revolution. Now, in this mission, you are tasked with trying to retrieve a secret weapon from a, faci- from a facility that's coming under attack. As you get there, you also find out that certain personnel are being kept hostage, and you're told that that's not a priority. Now, when you find the hostage area, you have a couple different options. You can try to go in guns blazing, which at this point in the game is rather difficult, so it definitely gives you some hints towards taking a stealthy or even more of a puzzle-solving approach. Now, you can try to stealth, sneak by the different enemies, and try to go in the front door. If you do, you'll trigger the bomb. Now, in doing this, then, you have a couple options. You can try to disable the bomb. Now... That's one kind of scenario you can go into. Even in that scenario, there's other options. Once you get in there, you can try to disable the bomb by hacking it. You can try to guess the code or find the code on someone, which is hidden in the room. Or, even taking a more inventive approach, you can pull out a gun and shoot the canister, which stops the container from mixing and stops the bomb. That sounds like such a simple piece, yet it was extremely revolutionary and awesome to see in the game because it gave you a true feeling of of choice and a true feeling of being immersed in the game. You really felt like you could play it how you wanted. Now, you could also sneak above through the grates, going through a sideway, try to hack it that way. You know, there were other pieces of it, and you can skip the mission completely. It doesn't stop the actual objective. Even further in the game, there are other elements of this, and it all works together with the RPG system. Now, RPGs have very often been PC domains. RPGs work well for it because it not only gives players the level of customization they're hoping to see, it also lets them really define how they want to play the game. In Human Revolution, you can put your points into stats to make it so you can take more damage, run faster, aim better, or you can put it into cloak, hacking, and all the other elements. How you go about the game also defines how you want to size up your character, and you can make decisions based on that. 
Even more astounding is the game puts limits at points. So if you didn't put points into a certain aspect that allows you to jump higher, you can't get into a building a certain way. You, you limit your choices all of a sudden. In modern games today, not only do we not see this level of choice, with a lot of games being linear with the illusion of choice. You know, they present this A or B scenario. Mass Effect is a great example of the Renegade and Paragon options where they try to present this morality piece by stating that, well, you can be a dick or you can be an angel. Last I checked, life isn't that black and white, and there's definitely some middle ground to it. Human Revolution really took that into play, stating that, you know, you can go multiple different directions. You know, one of the missions you have to do, you have to sneak into a, a, a police station to try to get an autopsy. And if you go in, you can try to talk your way through an old friend. You can use an augmentation that gives you an advantage when talking through him. You can also just sneak in with a cloak. You can run in and shoot everybody. Or you can go in through a secret entrance on the roof. Now, getting to that secret entrance requires a couple other augmentations, just like an augmentation would be required to almost guarantee that you'd bypass the social check. Now, these are elements that just work out super well, and it makes the game have a natural replay value. So, looking back in the game, the storyline is awesome. For anyone that's never played it, I highly recommend it, especially because you can pick the game up relatively cheap. I think even on Steam right now, it's less than 15 bucks. Otherwise, wait for a deal and pick it up on that. Definitely get the director's cut as they fixed up some of the boss fights. Great storyline. The, ele the element of choice is really well designed in this game. Even the RPG elements are very well designed, giving you a lot of unique pathways you can know, go without locking you in, but it also puts blocks into the game. So if you don't develop your character in a certain way, you can't use a certain choice. And there are some parts where there are some interesting Easter eggs or more unique pieces that you'll see with it. Um, the augmentation, the social one, is known as the Cassie Aug, and it stands for something that I can't remember right now. But at one point, you can try to use it on somebody who's also augmented like you. And if you do, he basically calls you out of that and says, well, you know, what were you okay, hoping to do? Wise. Try to get me to reveal some secret information, blah, 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 blah. Well, let's just pretend you did. The they throw in a bit of real-life humor to it. You're not this superpower human. You are just a guy put in this situation trying to make a difference. Uh, and the game highlights that. It also highlights it by showing that you have restrictions if you don't go a certain direction. You can't just magically fit every scenario and you're not going to always have every choice. All Around Deus Ex, in my opinion, was a great game, and it's a game I probably put more hours into than I'd ever expect. The natural replay value is there just in how you build your character, how you go about the game, and how you traverse different scenarios and challenges. I especially like going through and trying to find pieces I missed, and every time I play it, I find some new easter egg or new premise that I wouldn't have expected. But all of that pales in comparison to how well the company designed this game. Now, when the game originally came out, they ran into some budget and time constraints that forced them to outsource their boss fights, which, due to some communication issues, forced or caused excuse me, the boss fights to not really mesh up with the game. Biggest reason behind this was that the company that did the fights kind of thought it was going to be your standard shooter, so they made the boss fights like that. Now, instead of just claiming it was whatever it happened, they admitted their mistakes and ended up developing a brand new DLC that showcased how they could have gone about making their own boss fights with it and eventually revamping the game in the director's cut to put all these new boss fights back into the game and combine the DLC into the main story. Now that's pretty cool alone and honestly the director's cut as its own is well worth the 20 to $30 price tag it probably came out at. But the company didn't go about it that way. If you owned the original game and if you owned the DLC, the director's cut, at least on the PC, was only five bucks. They kind of did it as an apology to saying, hey, we're sorry we went about it this way, we want to give you a chance to pick this up. And it is extremely worth it. For five bucks, the new game plus, the extra elements they put in there, and some of the enhanced graphics are well worth it. The game still runs extremely smooth, still has a lot of maintenance and help behind it, and has quite a bit of following of people that play it. Despite the fact that the game doesn't have a lot of components that developers today seem to think are required, like a high-end multiplayer or a high-end difficulty curve, the game is relatively easy once you play it. But that's because the focus of the game is not the challenge of beating it. It's the challenge of going through the game and finding the different pieces, going about the different missions, find the different solutions to the challenges. This is one of the big reasons why this game emulates PC gaming so well. It took advantage of a better inventory system, better menu system, all the different things you can take advantage of on a PC, while still creating a very diverse and immersive game that controls extremely well, and even ported over to a console extremely well when they did it there. Now, that's actually a big point because games today so often get developed for the console and ported to the PC, 
but no one tends to go backwards with it, and yet we see better success when it's done that way. So, if you've never played Deus Ex Human Revolution, I highly recommend you pick it up sometime. It is a very Ross, worthwhile really game and easily is in the top tier of my top games ever. I said I it is pretty much the number one PC game I've ever played. I extremely enjoyed it. The story is still fun, and I'm really sad to see that that same development team didn't come back to the create another sequel that would have gone extremely well. They tried to make a different one, uh, Deus Ex The Fall, that didn't really work out. They also looked at doing some other stuff, I think, with kind of making it into an online system or even more of a, uh, not a MOBA, excuse me, um, an MMO out of it. I don't think that worked out too well, but the development was extremely pristine, and it's a game that, honestly, I think will, will last for ages, much as a lot of other games have. But even more so, for developers looking at creating a high-end PC game, this is the focus you should do. Now, Human Revolution sold tons of copies, still sells plenty of copies today, because it was so well designed, and it was designed with PC gamers in mind. With the changing expanse of gamers reaching that point, with PC gamers starting to climb very, very high, and also with the approach of the differential gamer. You have people that are not your standard shoot 'em up first-person shooter, Call of Duty gamers. You have people more interested in puzzle-solving adventure games, games that provide a different aspect of enjoyment through either solving a puzzle, finding a challenge, or just exploring an environment. You don't need to necessarily shoot somebody, feel like the top gun, and be in the top ranks of a multiplayer to enjoy a video game, and Human Revolution truly embodied that. So, if you're looking for a good model to match a game off of, developers, I highly recommend Human Revolution. And to those that created the game, please give us a sequel. This game highly deserves it and is extremely worthwhile for it. Guys, I want to thank you for listening to me. This has been the Red Gamer from Urban Gaming Elite. If you haven't had a chance to, please check us out at urbangamingelite.com. You can also find me on Twitter at the Red Gamer or follow our main channel at UGamingElite. With that, guys, please let me know in your comments below what you thought of our discussion here. Peace. What your thought is of PC games and what game you think stands out among the rest for PC. Is there a game you think should top the list as the best PC game in the last decade? Or a game that you think would be a great model to look at for future games? And of course, guys, if you like this content, you like these kind of pieces, please hit that subscribe button. Let us know what you think. Like the video. Share it. Share it with your friends, family, cousin, and anybody else you know. And help spread the word for it. Till next time, guys, I'm The Red Gamer, signing out.